Hello, this is the help video for Exchange 2010 Database Backups and Restores. In a previous video we added this client uh, and now we're going to go ahead and uh, show you what the backups and restores would look like. But before we do that, I recall when I made the previous video that I forgot to edit this and actually delete the C drive since I want the backup to be quick for this demonstration purpose. So I'll make that quick change. And now we'll run our backup. If your database was really huge, uh, this process might take several hours, but in this case, I happen to know that my database is quite small, so it should finish, it should finish fairly quickly. Okay, there's our backup job. So I'll go ahead and let's browse into that and I'll show you what things will look like. You recall that the Exchange 2010 is backed up using VSS writers, so we won't see what we the traditional Exchange folder underneath there. Instead we see VSS, uh, which contains the Microsoft Exchange writer, and what we're after is buried uh, underneath here. So we can drill down. Uh, this is actually just the, the file path to where the actual EDB file or the actual log files exist. So I'll show you that example. So there's the EDB file and the, you would expect to see the same if I were to drill down uh, underneath the logs here. So that's how the VSS backup works. It just grabs in the file path. If I wanted to do a restore from this point, I would actually just go up a level and I can just simply select to choose my mailbox database and then run my restore from here. But before we do that, there's a few other things that need to happen. I need to be aware of where I want to restore. Uh, by default, the system will always attempt to restore back to the original location, or in other words, will attempt to write where the, where the actual live database uh, now resides. But if you don't want to do that, you'll need to restore to a recovery database. In older versions of Exchange, there was a recovery storage group, but now Exchange 2010 has added a lot more flexibility, and instead of in place of a recovery storage group, they have something called a recovery database. I'll give you a little example of how to create one of those, um, but a lot of excellent tools and resources online that can help you and explain how to use the recovery database. And I'll post a link to uh, Microsoft's uh, knowledge base article here at the end of this video to kind of direct you towards that. But let me show you a few things before we get to that point. I'll bring up my Exchange Management Console here and you'll see if you if you if you're looking at yours and you expand down to the organization configuration and then click on mailbox here I see uh, my server and everything's mounted and looking just fine. Um, if I did want to restore right on top of my existing database, I can do that, but I would have to first dismount the database. Then I would also have to go into this Properties menu. And when that pops up, if you go to the Maintenance tab, there is an option that will allow you to overwrite the database on a restore. Um, again, this is only if you wish to overwrite your existing, your live database. Since I don't want to do that, I'm just going to cancel out of this. Um, but I wanted to show you those steps in case that's what you wanted. Uh, now, in order to restore to an alternate location, or in other words, to restore to a recovery database, you'll need to open up your Exchange Management Shell. You can get to that from your, under the All Programs list, Exchange, and then uh, right-click. I would always just right-click and run this as administrator. I should open up and look very much like a, um, a command shell, but it has a different title at the top. It may take a moment, but uh, eventually it should kind of expand itself and show you 
uh, that it is now connected to your Exchange server. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy and paste in a command to create the recovery database. So you're basically telling it to create a new mailbox database. Uh, it's a, of type recovery, and we're going to name it simply RDB1, uh, and then you give the name of the server so that it knows where to create the database, and then you'll hit enter. Okay, once the recovery database has been created, you can minimize that window or close it out. Uh, and then if you go back to your Exchange Management Console and uh, look again at your mailbox, now you may need to refresh a couple of times, but eventually you should see your recovery database listed um, underneath your actual databases. Uh, and they, will, they should always be dismounted. The way to restore the database into the recovery database uh, is to redirect your... Uh, you'll need to redirect the backup to the file path or the folder structure where the recovery database was created. So let's try and figure out where that is. If you look under properties, you should see the path of where uh, your database, recovery database was created. So we'll direct our restore to this folder, the RDB1. So to redirect, I just come here to this relocate to this path, and I sh since I copied and pasted, I should be able to go ahead and then hit restore. Okay, and there's our job uh, restored. So now, we can verify that the data was actually restored there by browsing to that location. Here's my RDB1. And inside of here, I would expect to be able to drill down and see those files. Uh, so that's what I need, my database file and the various log files. At this point, what you'll need to do is copy these files uh, and move them back up to the correct path because Exchange is expecting them. So you'll want to copy those files uh, from after, drilled, after drilling down into here and finding them, you will want to copy those files um, back into here so that Exchange sees them when it attempts to mount the database. So let's see if that worked. And then come back here and we just simply right click and mount the database. And after a short moment, uh, that database should be show up as mounted. Uh, so from here, uh, in, able to, in order to be able to extract email messages or pull entire mailboxes out of the recovery storage group, or the recovery database, rather, uh, you would need to follow uh, a handful of other instructions using the Exchange Management, or rather the Exchange Management Shell. Uh, and there's all kinds of tools. So again, I'll give you a link here at the end of the video uh, directing you to uh, uh, a set of examples on Microsoft's website uh, as to how to do that. But that's how we uh, run a, an Exchange database backup on Exchange 2010 using the VSS writers, and that's how you would restore to a recovery database. Hope that's been helpful. Thank you.